Hello there everyone and welcome back to Cold War Iron Curtain Mod for Hots of Iron 4, which I might have gotten that title wrong, but regardless, we need to talk about Operation Paper, the invasion of Yunnan. After the fall of the mainland to lo loyal troops to Mao Zedong, an insurgency was established in Burma by Li Mi, or Li Mai, probably Mi, a nationalist general that had formed the backbone of what was become the Yunnan pr province anti-communist National Salvation Army. Hmm, where have I heard that one before? Which was supported by both Taiwan and the U.S. As Chinese forces started to mount troops in the border with Korea, the Americans urged the nationalist insurgents to mount an attack on the province of Yunnan. Tying the PRC on a conflict with these insurgents while also presenting itself as a key to the renewed nationalist attack into the mainland, which would break the Maoist forces and bring China into control of Chiang Kai-shek once again. As soon as these troops set themselves inside Yunnan, they would capture airfields that would allow American forces to send supplies in order to maintain the invasion, while Li Mi was more dedicated to use the incursion into Yunnan as a key to receive American weaponry, retreat into Burma, and fortify the insurgency. Whether any of these plans will succeed is but a mystery to both the general that commands the insurgency, and Generalissimo in Taiwan. A surprising move, but right now we, as you can see, we're having a good time with uh, Tibet. And we'll get an event called the Tibet Situation, because Tibet is, of course, of course, a rifle pot of China. At least, as what the dictators tell me. But anyway, my apologies about that, everyone. The game actually crashed, but the Tibet situation. Tibet came under the rule of the Qing Dynasty of China in 1720, after Chinese forces successfully expelled the forces of the Dzungar Khanate. After the Xinhai Revolution in 1911, they became an independent state. At the time, political Tibet obtained de facto independence. Its socio-economic and political systems resembled medieval Europe. Attempts by the 13th Dalai Lama between 1913 and 1933 to enlarge and modernize Tibet and military eventually failed, largely due to opposition from powerful aristocrats and monks. The Tibetan government had little contact with other governments of the world during this period of de facto independence, with some exceptions, most, not most notably India, the UK, and the US. Thus left Tibet diplomatically isolated and cut off from the point where it could no longer make its positions on issues well known to the international community. We, however, never dropped our claims that Tibet is a part of China, and have been negotiating with them for years now, but it might be time to be more aggressive if we want them to be unified or united with us. Abandon our claims? That sounds very un-Chinese. Because even the ROC has claims on China. Demand authority? Absolutely. But let us continue with... What else? Um, become a Comic-Con observer. We've got quite a few comms to go through as well, so... Uh, nationalized industry? I don't want to get hit by consumer goods. I like the construction speed, but... Consumer goods, like... So there was one comment saying that we should invest in our water infrastructure, which we are. So we're trying to do that, so... I do... Remember that we need to do that, so... We'll get there. Also, we did do lessons from the Unification Wars, or Liberation Wars. Um, we have fought long and hard against the Imperialist occupiers, the KMT, the False Emperor, the Japanese. Over these wars, the Liberation Wars, we have learned much. With the conclusion of the People's Liberation of Army or People's Liberation War in China, we must take lessons we have learned and apply them to the People's Liberation Army. Which, you know, Army XP is nice. Oh, we get a military well, that's not bad actually. I don't mind maybe getting that one. That seems pretty useful. Some dockers would be nice. But let's establish a People's Liberation Army Air Force, which I've always thought was weird. Army Air Force, hopefully the game does not crash. I don't know, I don't think it was an update of the time it's recording, but I still love this. I still love how Korea looks like right now. I, obviously, it's not good in real life, but, like, I'm kind of scared to go up. Five speed, please don't crash. Please don't crash. Oh, please. The Tripartite Declaration. Is this? This isn't in World War II. Uh, the U.S., Britain, and France have signed the Tripartite Declaration. The three states pledged to maintain the territorial status quo of an establishment, but as established by the recent Arab-Israeli armistice agreements. The agreement confirms the commitment of these states to peacefully to peace and stability in the Middle East and prevent any side from destabilizing the precarious at peace. The agreement is being welcomed by the Arab states just desperately rebuilding their military capabilities. The Israelis are said to be upset as they believe their military advantage will soon be lost as the three states are also agreed to limit arms sales to the region. Hopefully this will calm tensions in the region. Just let a, just glass everybody. I don't care who hears. Just glass them all. Oh, the return of the Shah. His unexpected return has been acclaimed by the Iranian people. In this time of need, they need a rock in which to hold, and this rock might very well be their heir of a 2500 years dynasty. Interesting. God, you've, the Middle East has been, I don't know, just, I'd love to see the Middle East change from what it was, or something like that. I don't know, also, I did click on Preserve our National Sovereignty. Uh, oh, their influence is 8.5%. Um, you know, let's see what happens. Okay, so it went lower. Maybe we should do this one more. So it went lower about by 6%-ish, about 5.9%. So we'll see what happens, but they refuse our demands. To best now refuse our generous offer to join us. It seems like we must now respond with military force. Oh, and also, I guess, please don't crash. Long live the great Chinese People's Liberation Army. Yay, let's go, boys, let's go. To bed time, to bed. GDP 0.23 billion, or trillion, actually, nothing bad. Keep inc increasing our cast. We love cast. I was a little bit ahead of time over there. Can we get this one? 
Well, we're trying to get that one, so no. Heavy fighters, no, we're probably not going to do that. Recon stuff, carrier fighters, we don't... Actually, we should probably be making some sort of ship, right? Light ships and subs. Ooh, I'm going to assume that the meta for naval stuff is pretty much the same as all the other mods. Like, you want light ships, a few screens, quite a few screens compared to the capital ships. Um, cruisers, battle line, frigates, of course. Uh, destroyers, I think I just want to go with more cruisers. I like cruisers. Let's go with this one. Let's see what we can do. At least start making some sort of navy. Ooh, yes. Better better planes, please. Better planes. Better planes? Hmm. Better planes. Ah, mountain. Ah, never fight a land war in Asia. Oh, my nice census is gone. All right. Any upgrades here? Nope. Oh, mountaineer, though. And anything here? Mountaineer. Very nice. Love it. Ah, the first piece of Tibetan territory taken. They have two divisions. Okay, they do have two divisions. No one's died yet, but... And we only have 20 million map right? The coronation of King Saud. Saud bin Abdulaziz al Saud was coronated earlier today in Saudi Arabia. He has a tremendous responsibility of succeeding his father, the legendary King Ibn Saud, who founded the modern Saudi state. Where his father united a kingdom of Bayud and chieftains, the new King Saud must contend with regional instability, ideological threats, and international intrigue. Saudi Arabia controls huge oil reserves, and the Saudi king must contend, or must contend with much more than just organizing the annual pilgrimage and securing loyalty from subjects. In addition... Relations with the Wahhabi ulema must continue to be preserved and nurtured as losing their support risk major inter internal stability. In his opening speech to his people and the world at large, the new king announced a new council of ministers. In addition, he said his reign will not be focused on military conflict but on ending poverty, expanding education, healthcare, and securing a strong military for defense, and on implementing sharia to all within the kingdom. King Saud has been long appointed crown prince and was well prepared by his father to rule as a des desert ruler of Arabia. However, summary... Uh, his handling of the country's growing oil wealth and dealing with the different ideologies flourishing in the Arab world may be too much for the new king. Time will tell whether the new king can rise to the challenge he faces in a world vastly different from the one he grew up with. Long live the king and death of the, the Ibn Saud. The Saudi government announced the death of the king Ibn Saud today. The founder of the a modern Saudi state passed away from a heart attack overnight in his palace of Ta'if. Ibn Saud was born in 1875 to the ruler of Nejd, or Nejd. However, in his teenage years, he and his family fled as exiles when his family's rivals of the Rashidis conquered Nejd. By 1902, Ibn Saud led a band of relatives and followers to reconquer his family's hometown of Riyadh. This led to a campaign against the Rashidis, which saw Ibn Saud successfully liberate his family's homeland while driving the Ottomans out of the region. He embraced the ancient alliance between his family and the Wahhabi sect, with Wahhabi support in the form of unifying ideology and devoted fighters. Ibn Saud was eventually able to reconquer the Rashidis in 1922. He solidified his position as a world leader by conquering the Hejaz from the Hashemites in 1925 and 1932. He proclaimed the Kingdom of Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia. His, continued, his control of the annual Hajj pilgrimage gave him in Wahhabism prestige among the Muslim world, but the discovery of crude oil in the late 30s would provide unprecedented wealth for the kingdom. Ibn Saud used Wahhabism to unite the tribes of Arabia, and oil wealth allowed him to offer subsidies to secure loyalty from subjects. His impressive military victories were combined with attack diplomacy as he navigated regional tensions and secured a close partnership with the U.S. Questions will be asked if his successors can maintain the Saudi alliance with the hobbies if they continue to support American support to ensure they will be protected from threats to the kingdom both external and internal. Prince Saud, his son, is considered the favorite to take the throne. May he rest in peace. Oh, we'll see what happens. So we're still building one and building more military factory. Uh, this is another civvy, right? And that's a farm, civvies, farms. We just, we need a lot here. We just need so much. Uh, build the air chief stuff. Oh, that's cool. Reuse old Japanese aircraft. That seems kind of weird, but that makes sense. The People's Daily. Yes, finally, let's get a newspaper, shall we? Come on, guys, go. We got those, those long legs, skinny legs, short legs? I don't know. We got legs. Use them, baby. Welfare. Okay, so we now no longer get penalties to changing our, our program here. Um, How is this looking? They're not increasing this anymore, which is nice. Oh. Tibet defeats China. Can you imagine Tibet actually defeated China? Peace with Tibet, Republic of... In oh, are we? What the... Oh, we found a division. Look at that. Can we actually win here? Are we? Looks like we are. I mean, we're fighting over a river, which sucks, but... Wow. Lin Biao's got a lot of attack. Look at that. Yeah, I'll we'll probably win here. Lhasa? Yes. Would you like to come to Lhasa? Here, cut him off. Excuse me. Thank you. Come again. All right. 2.6%. Xinjiang J2. Very nice. Any more support yet? No, it's 1955 stuff. Um, I, I want to keep going with computer stuff, but we possibly can, but it doesn't look like we can really. We're getting that one anyway, so we're good. Industry now. That's a little bit ahead of time. Let's grab this one. Efficient air freight. I mean, we might not get this right now, but I think it's it's always worth doing more industry stuff. Losses? 100 Chinese guys versus 
2300 Tibetans! The People's Daily! Oh, we need at least 50% more stability. We need more social reforms. Yes, why not? If a revolution is truly to be successful, then uh, in, for our entire society, our way of life must be reformed. Under Chairman Mao and the Communist Party, we must change our entire nation. Cool. Um, I can wait on that. Oh, look at that. The 17 point agreement. The People's Republic of China announced today the signing of the 17 point agreement with Tibet. The Chinese are allowed in the agreement for ending the current fighting and reuniting Tibet with China. <clears throat> The agreement allows the PRC to establish military and civil administrative departments in Tibet, but promises local government to its people. The Tibetan government in Lhasa has expressed shock over the agreement, claiming its negotiators were not authorized to sign any agreement and the conditions appear to be dictated by the Chinese. Despite claims the treaty was likely signed under duress, Tibetan military resistance offers or appears to have collapsed and the Chinese troops are implementing the agreement with little hurdles. Tibet's capitulated! Great news! Everyone will be happy by this. Everyone. And those who are not happy by it, well, then they're, then they're sore losers. But that's okay with us. Uh, excuse me, North Korea. How are you doing? I'm glad the game's not crashed yet. Ooh, love it. Uh, cool down. <clears throat> we could buy more stuff. Don't really want to spend that much money, even though we have we got a little bit of it. <laughs> we can close out of that. We can close out of uh, this one too. We can send stuff to Vietnam. I don't mind supporting them a little bit. Here, you want some? Actually, do we have anything? What, what, what do we even have? We don't have a lot of things, actually. We got some medium artillery, which is not bad. We're working better on guns. We need oh, so much more light artillery. <clears throat> uh, where's that light already? Um, it's down here. Yeah, towed artillery. Li oh, we have like literally, we live literally nothing on it. Yeah, we gotta keep making more millies. Oh boy, but. A prosecution of the rural cults. The chairman of the PRC has announced today that the various cults that are present in rural China are to be hunted down due to being collaborative with the KMT, reactionary, and bourgeois elements in China. The Red Spear Society has already begun to fall, with its members being arrested promptly by the forces of the CC CPC, and the Big Sword Society seem to have met the same fate, along with the Yellow Sand Society. Holy societies have been inspired by its activities in by military and spiritual and romanticized monarchist ideals. Most, if not all, of these societies vehemently oppose the Qing and believe that a Ming restoration would bring happiness and peace to all of China. It seems that Chairman Mao disagrees profusely with that idea. Interesting. Launching the mass campaign. Launching a political campaign will require mobilization of all our cadres, but the cost is worth outcome. Although it might draw some discontent, this will only strengthen the people's revolution, led by the party. Nothing bad is going to happen. Nothing bad ever happens in the PRC, and anything you hear about that... It's totally fake news. Totally. We could use that stuff. Ooh, construction wood. Let's get some shitlets. America calls for African decolonization. <sighs> Eisenhower, why? I mean, I guess it, you know, it costs a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. It does cost a lot of awesome money, but still. The end of an era. Look at that. The rule of King Faduk's son, King Fowl II, is very short. Oh, that's sad. It's, it is, even though we're American, I'm an American, it's kind of sometimes sad to see the fall of Tradition. 2.6%. What if we did this one? Actually, I'm going to wait till this is higher. Because they're still trying to influence us. A couple comments up. Uh, someone says, influence is tied to foreign power projection. And eventually, if you have enough influence over somebody, you can apparently puppet them. So that's actually really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. But after launching mass campaigns, um, what are we going to do next? Oh, the three anti... Ooh. We need at least 60% stability and more than 300 political power. Launching a political campaign requires mobilization of all of our cadres, but the cost is worth the outcome. Although it might draw some discontent, this will only strengthen the people's revolution led by the party. Level 8 party supremacy. God, we love supremacy here. Let's become a, a Comic Con desert observer. I think that, that could be worth it, right? That could probably be worth it, because we're getting more uh, political. political. Weekly stability. So I'll just give it a little bit more time, we'll be fine. War support's not too bad, and we're going to get 1.29 political power every single day, which is awesome. So after Comic Con observer, grant loans to Vietnam and Cambodia. You know what, I think that'd be good. We wanted to have a strong northern Vietnamese presence. It's only 1954 too. And we're only minus 80, 80 food? 80 burgers? We love burgers. Oh, and we're going to finish that one water infrastructure. So that should help out, right? Hopefully. One, two, three, four. Good, good, good. Keep building up more roads in Shangxi as well. I'm probably saying all this stuff wrong, but whatever. No. Quarter, quarter trillion in GDP. Not bad. How's it looking? It's, it's barely going up, man. I need to really get some office parks, don't I? You know, maybe we'll try that. Let's, let's get up. There's that. Cool. Office parks. It does cost some resources, but we have resources already. Okay. Oh, oh, maybe we can't get them. Oh, there it is. Large amount of income, but no industrial output. I want to get one. I want to get one. Look at that. Let's get let's, let's get at least one, right? At least one. Cool. So uh, this stuff is looking nice. Industry stuff. 
get some more construction speed is not very much, but I'll gladly take it. Grant loans, Vietnam and all them folks over there. That sounds very, very good. We have no fuel. The army, well, is training, of course, but still. I'd like to mess with this up. As, as, well, as we saw last time, education costs way too much, as well as welfare. So, no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah, look at that. Most of the budget goes to the education. Trying to educate people in the, the ways of correct uh, communist Maoism just costs so much money, man. Increase economic cooperation with the Eastern Bloc. Yeah, we'll get to more industrial parks. Developing links with all of our socialist brothers will help stimulate intra-block trade. The GDR, DDR, People's Re Socialist Republic of Albania, Romania. Nice. Oh, yes. And that on too. Um, yeah, heart attack is okay. It's not bad. That actually might be more beneficial now just because you, a lot of enemies are using armor. They're just using a lot of armor. But I'm still used to using this side. I'm just going to go try to shoot. We get more heart attack here anyway, so... Army plus 10%, you get you get it down there too, so. Centralized fire control. Let's go. And we're almost close. 1.32. By the time this is done, we should be able to do the three campaigns. Ooh, but then, ooh, just give us a few more, few more days first. Um, can we do it now? There we go. Now we can do it. Nice. So we gotta keep that people at the end of McCarthyism. <gasps> no, McCarthy didn't do enough. Interesting. Man, what a time to be alive back in those days. Very weird. Then again, people could probably say that about us now. But look at that mo the money. No, the food. It's looking better. It's looking even better. We need more millies, though. Like, I want to get, keep one line at all times on on uh, millies, because, as you see, we definitely need it. Efficient air freight. What else are we going to do? Uh, materials? Okay, more output. I like that a lot. Rare earth hydrometallurgy plant. Yeah, why not? Oh, well, because we need this one first. That would help first. Cool. And after we get that one, uh, we'll probably actually make these just because we can. <laughs> so, World War II torpedoes, sub hulls, and we can do some sub stuff. At least getting some sort of ships going. Uh, aircraft carriers. I like battleships. I like them big. I like them bulky. World War II capitals. There we go. Is that a good idea? I don't know. We'll see what happens. How much we do? Have, we do. Have, oh, we, yeah. We need naval speed for this. We do have technically. Huh. Well, goodbye. Why is it A? That's very weird. Oh, we probably don't have an, a, a lot of things. World War II armament. What is this one? Medium armament? That means your capital ship, so. Um, it honestly really doesn't matter. Let's come to this one first. Sonar, radar, early... Uh, doesn't really matter. Nothing there. Uh, World War II engine, screen engine. Oh, we will be using this eventually. Why is this? Less reliability, but more speed. More fuel usage screen. Uh, I like the speed. I mean, it's okay, but... There's really not much here. That's better. And... Light armaments. Gun, gun attack. I don't mind gun attack, but AA? Yeah, let's do that one. We consider a capital ship. That is very weird. There you go. Make that. Don't want to make too many of them, so there you go. There you go. We want to make... We want some... I'll get some, a lot more naval XP. They haven't really increased that too much, which is good. And the three anti-campaign. Ah, supremacy. The three anti-campaign. The Manchuria. Mao's launched a campaign to get rid of corrupt or otherwise pro-Taiwan elements inside China with a focus on former KMT members, bureaucratic officials who were not official party members and party members that were corrupt. These antis were anti-corruption, anti-waste, and anti-bureaucracy. The three anti-campaign dished out extremely harsh punishments, including torture and all found guilty of the confessed... Or unconfessed crimes had to pay fines to the government. The helmsman of the nation has claimed time and time again that this is a major issue or major measure that's necessary to rid China of corrupt members and those that embezzle and stagnate the Chinese economy with their own selfish gains. Oh, look at this one. This is really good. Fight corruption. So, so instead of replace or instead of low integration, we get medium integration, which is more political power and stability, and endemic government corruption with government corruption. I prefer government corruption to endemic government corruption, but maybe that's just me. Um, we're also not training anybody yet, just because we don't have enough resources for them, so... Chetlets is good. Can you grab anything here yet? Anything here yet? No. Not bad. I mean, 54? Obviously, like, we're not moving that fast. We really are not moving that fast, which is kind of disappointing, but, like... I'm trying to go fast here, but... I love that the devs have put in 25-day focus trees. Or focuses. Just... It, it's nice. It's very nice. I love it that the devs did that, so... Thank you, devs, if you're watching, which... Actually, like... One or two of the devs have been watching this campaign so far, so thank you. And thanks for making this, though, so, if you, so, the mod. Very interesting. I love it. 
We're off we done with fighting corruption. I love it. I love it. Forbid waste. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Wreck the bureaucracy. More than 75 political power. We lose even more weekly manpower. We get even more integration, though, so that's not too bad. Five anti-campaign. Well, let's see. We can end the feudal family and have gender equality. Or preserve the traditional family structure and have a... Uh, uh, words are hard right now. Patriarchal society. Patriarchal. Patriarchal. There's a research speed. And the feudal family. I don't know which one. I I'm going to assume that we get gender equality so we can kill everyone else that we want to, like, equally. But let's do participate in the Geneva Convention. Don't question what we're doing here. Wow, minus 45. That's a lot better. Wow. President re-extends term limits. Interesting development. All right. Actually, how, how are we doing with our... Like, oh, my goodness. We, we're we not doing that well over here. Um, You go down to two. Other than that... Yeah, let's keep making more stuff. We're looking really good on guns. 76 a day is pretty nice. The Soviet Union condemns Lysenkoism. For decades, agricultural and biological theories of Trofim Lysenko have been only acceptable theories on agricultural development. These theories called Lycosen Lysenkoism condemn geneticists and more scientific methods of agriculture as being capitalistic and incorrect. It rejected the concept of natural selection and the idea of the gene. With approval of Stalin, Lysenko supports detained thousands of biologists and geneticists. Any criticism of his work was condemned and punishable by arrest, however. In recent years, the Soviet government following the death of Stalin has halted its support for Lysenko and now publications, including those associated with the state, are openly condemning Lysenkoism. This shift is being attributed to the new relaxation on censorship laws, and many universities are now bringing back scientific agriculturalists and downgrading or removing Lysenkoism from the curriculum. A good day for science. For now. Alright, and after that one, let's bomb Quemoy. Ah, nothing like a good old bombing. Actually, ooh. If that we get if we get a crisis. Ooh, that was one comment saying that hopefully this war doesn't this cold war doesn't become hot. But there's no guarantees, no guarantees. We're just just casual bombing, just casual. We enjoy ourselves when we bomb other people, especially Tibetans. But nah, yeah, it's neither here nor there. Islamic Brother riding in Egypt. Saudi Aramco strikes. Around 50,000 workers in the Saudi oil industry join a strike for better working conditions. The oh look at that oh no um, the Saudi king has ordered a royal commission of inquiry as this marks a radical transformation in labor relations in the kingdom. Saudi workers are said to be inspired by foreign Arab workers who point out their poor conditions in comparison to the vastly superior conditions their American managers enjoy in the kingdom. The bad conditions and refusal for Aramco to meet worker demands has driven anti-Americans as the workers believe that American-owned companies' actions reflected what the U.S. thought of its workers. Also radicalizing the workers into striking has been recent inflation and angered opulent spending by the royal family. To coordinate the strike, a workers' committee has been established, and the unity of Saudi workers beyond travel bonds. It seems a major threat to the Saudi royal family. The Saudi king will have to decide on whether to give in to the workers' demands, offer a few concessions, or reject the workers' demands. Giving in to all the demands may make the workers happy, but embolden them to make more demands and empower the influence of foreign workers. In addition, the U.S. will not be happy if Aramco loses a strike. Supporting Aramco and rejecting the workers will help our standing with the U.S., but infuriate the workers, so that perhaps a compromise will be the best route. In the long term, the government must consider how to control the influence of foreign labor on the citizens of Saudi Arabia. Will this increase oil prices? I hope not. That's all I care about. The workers? We don't care about workers here. We care about the revolution. That's what we care about. We can close that one too. Um, yeah, oh, we'll send more stuff when we have stuff. Is it, we just can't send stuff because we don't have enough stuff there. A pre stressed concrete. I don't know anything about concrete. I want to learn about concrete, man. How does it work? Oh, yes, look at that. Yes, construction speed. Yes. We are modernizing. A third of a trillion. We were early at a quarter of a trillion, but now we're at a third. I love it. Oh, let's make the PRC big and th thick. Well, we kind of already are thick. Wilhelm Zeiser Purge. Okay. Interesting development. Ban Kumai, the Taiwan Straits uh, crisis. After the communist victory in the Civil War, the nationals escaped to Taiwan and steadfastly held it further against Mao's offenses. Along with the island of Taiwan, a few islands in the South China Sea were also captured by the nationals, such as Kinmen and Matsu, deploying some 58,000 troops on Kinmen and 15,000 on Matsu. Recently, troops from the People's Liberation Army have begun shelling the aforementioned islands, with Zhu and Lai claiming that Taiwan must be liberated from the oppressive forces of the KMT that currently rule with an iron fist. The PLA also sent forces to seize the Yixiang Shan Islands, located off the coast of Zhejiang. Concerning. Yes, subsidized the People's Republic of Mongolia. We denied them um, Inner Mongolia, but just because they didn't need it. Cool. Subsidize, yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, any other social stuff? Oh, the fiscal. We have no corruption. Ah, no corruption in the PRC. Absolutely not. Sex laws, huh? Population growth. Regressive s laws. Consumer factories. Ooh, that's not bad for population. Traditional views. We're in the middle, so I'm kind of okay in the middle. That's kind of okay. Women rights, we might talk about that later. I don't know. State media. Um, yeah, I don't want to change this one either. Minority rights. Oh, we can be oppressive. Greatly raises racial tensions over time. When I started this, I started, you know, like, 
the campaign before like, I started recording. It said we can have, even have race wars. So that's fun to start Egypt next, but like, can we have a race war in China? I'm sure we can. I mean, no one cares. No one's going to mess with us, probably. But like, Chinese race wars. What is this? Autonomous. What is this? Region of Pahut Pashtunistan? You know, I love that this mod exists. I really do. Because I don't, I really don't know the inter interwar period between now and World War II that well. Obviously, everyone knows about Vietnam, and some people, most people know about Korea, but still. Oh, look at that. Relevation about the brutality of Mongolia Great Purge. Fake news. Fake news. Purges. That's all Western imperialist, you know, fake news. You know. But seriously, like, I'm glad I get to learn about more about history about this stuff. Because, you know, Hoi 4 is usually about World War II or, you know, you know, like, what, what if Hitler won World War II? Or what if someone else won World War II? Or World War One? but I, I love that I get to learn more about it. But increase economic cooperation with Eastern Europe, yes. We get more industrial parks. At first I thought it was increased economic penetration, but anyways, anyways, whatever, whatever. A couple comments. Um, oh, we need to talk about North Korea too. But someone recommends I do Israel, which I will do. A lot of people want me to do and plays the United States, which I'm sure I'll probably do like several different European, European, American runs sometime. Not sure when, but because this campaign is probably going to be long, because as a lot of you guys said, when we do like more focuses, eventually the focus tree will change. So we do have to be aware of that. So it'll happen eventually. So there's so much PP. Um, excessive conscription. I mean, it's really not hurting us. Like, there's no point to really change this, so we're not going to. After this one, we're going to again send Zhu and Lai to the Bandung Conference. We'll get some sort of conference here. I love the... It's got to be Chinese characters, right? Cool. Um, let's see. Someone says, when are we going to get Burgundian system Mao? Well, some might say it already exists, but it's not too bad yet. It's, it's bad. Like, it's probably really bad here, but, like, not as bad as it could be. And I say that with a smile on my face. Look at that. <sighs> Communism is finally losing its hunger. Eventually, eventually. Actually, how are we, how, oh, wow, we're at 11,000 guns, not bad. We could definitely use more here, but, like, we gotta get some more light already. We really do. Look, Royalist military purge in Egypt? All right, cool, cool, cool. Slightly reduces tension over time. Affirmative action? Not here in China, baby. So after this one, gather supporters, become a big player in the Eastern Bloc. Let's do that one. We want to increase our output. So, Bulgaria, Hungary get some stuff, Poland get some stuff, DDR get some stuff, get increase the opinion of the DDR. The Toussaint Rouge. Oh, look at that, another long and brutal war. Ah, Algeria. Mass resignations of the military. Okay. Oh. Well, it's a military, what do you expect? The Bandung Conference. Most of the Asian and African states met today in a massive reunion to discuss Afro-Asian economic and cultural cooperation, opposing colonialism or neocolonialism by any nation in any shape. Being composed of 29 countries, it represents a total of a pop population of 1.5 billion, or 54% of the world's population. A 10-point declaration is being discussed, and it seems likely that it will pass unanimously. From these points, the most important ones are the abstention from intervention or interference in into the internal affairs of another country, refraining from acts of threats of aggression or the use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any country. A final communique is also being presented, which is currently underscoring the need for developing countries to loosen their economic dependence on the leading industrial nations by providing technical assistance to one or another through the exchange of experts and technical assistance. Interesting. And then gather international supporters because we want more political power, more war sport, and yeah, that'd be good. Look at that stability, 83%. That's nice. Ooh, we could, ooh, we could do that too, though. Hmm. Let's gather more international supporters. We want to be internationally recognized as a superpower someday, so let's do that first, and then we can rack the bureaucracy. Cool. Uh, like another comment said, build more water infrastructure. Yep, we totally are. Hopefully, yep, like I said earlier, this cold war does not become hot. Someone said the Sino-Soviet split occurred like in 1960. Some might say earlier than 1960, like late 50s, early 60s. So about 1960 is when the, the Sino-Soviet split apparently happened, so... I remember learning about that in history. I thought it was in the 1970s, especially when Nixon went to China, but I'm not always right about things. Not always. Sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm very wrong about things. <laughs> but usually I try to be right. Usually. Usually. Uh, 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 let's get some supporters first. And then we're going to grab some forward observers. Nothing like observing other things. World War II material science? Great. Um, yeah, let's get some more petrochemicals. Why not? And plus 50% hydro metallurgy plant income. Hey, not bad. Not bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven, something. The execution of Lucutio Pastransk. Oh, huh. all right. Cool. A kangaroo court, basically. Is there anything else here? The influence is... So that only went down by 0.2. Preserver of national sovereignty. That kind of sucked. 
Now it's zero percent. Because I'm not sure what else we should spend over there. PP, because there's not much to here we can do, but that's alright. After that, we are going to rack the bureaucracy, because manpower doesn't matter. I mean, weekly manpower, that's 600 people a month. We get 8,000 a month, so we lose some PP, but that's alright. Rack the bureaucracy. And then we're going to forbid waste. Gains resource efficiency. Resource efficiency! I love resource efficiency! And minus 27, not bad. My goal by the end of this episode is to get rid of our deficit of food. So these people can eat. Probably. We'll see. But cool. Another, more comments. Some, someone says, or asks, why don't I use agency, or, you know, intel, intel agency, for military espionage and boosting ideology? Well, just because I forget about it, and it's it's important to do, but not extremely important. Oh. Closing of American Council in Hanoi. Uh-oh. Concerning. But, like, seriously, like, I use it to, like, get intel, but I don't really do anything else because I just forget about it, and it's not, like, like extremely needed. It, it helps. Every little bit helps, but, like, I don't know. It just I haven't been a massive fan of La Resistance DLC. I mean, it's okay. The spy agency stuff makes sense, but I'm like, eh, that works. If it works, it works, but I don't know. It's what it is. Cool. Build more water infrastructure. Um, someone says, as the Republic of China, you can get debuffs, or you can remove their debuffs, or remove the buffs for the PRC um, if you hold Shanghai for 50 days. I didn't know that. That's very cool. So whenever we play the ROC, beeline for Shanghai and hold it for like a month, two... Five weeks, or no, seven weeks, seven weeks in a day, and then you should be able to do okay. The five anti campaign. Launching a political campaign will require mobilization of all the cadres, but the cost is worth the outcome. Synchronized power plants? Nice. Let's get that one too. Well, you know what? I love and making our country better. Happy 1955, though, everyone. We still have a lot to do down here as well. And uh, we can nationalize it. The Great Leap Forward. Nothing bad happened during the Great Leap Forward, right? Ooh, tw that's so good for industrial parks, though. Weekly manpower goes down. You know what? Let's go and nationalize the industry first. I like nationalizing the industry. Nothing bad will happen out of that. And the sign of Soviet split. And we create our own faction. That's kind of cool. Approach Albania. Strengthen ties with the DPRK. So we need to talk about that before we do that. Tibetan uprising. Nationalize. Nationalize. Please nationalize. And then we're also probably going to be doing... Um, let's, let's wait to the leap forward. Sabotage of the Army McCarthy hearings. All right. Oh, look. That's the Southern California. And Washington. And Oregon. Let's go and do the five anti-campaigns. I think that'd be good to do. Probably follow it up with... Ooh, look at that. Recruit spies? Why not? The five anti-campaign with the Korean War. Opportunities were given to many northern Ch in China, which gave the rise of a new class of capitalists in Manchuria, who soon started to realize that they were not being seen with friendly eyes in Beijing. The five anti-campaign was soon launched, described as an all-out war against the bourgeoisie in China, and the aforementioned antis were anti-bribery, anti-theft of state property, anti-tax evasion, and anti-cheating on government contracts with anti-stealing state economic intelligence. Some complaints, uh, companies started to send a thousand confessions per day in order to rid themselves of these immense pressure that the CPC put in them. Braids of anti-capitalist activities went door to door to, to visit business leaders, generating immense psychological pressure. And also that we must probably, probably, execute 10,000 to several tens of thousands of embezzlers nationwide before we can solve the problem. There are hundreds of thousands of suicides that were a direct result of this campaign, with Chinese capitalists receiving no better treatment than foreigners. Interesting. And next up, we're going to encourage denunciations. And we have... We have level 2 intra-party opposition, and we'll get level 1 intra-party opposition, so we get more weekly stability, more daily political power gain, ideology drift defense, and just a fat stack of PP. Just fat stack. I mean, we have a lot of PP now. I'm not sure what else we can do with it, really. We can send stuff to people, but, like, we can do this stuff, but we don't have the, really, the budget to do any of that stuff. But right now, we're at minus 3 foods. We have minus negative 3 burgers. We want more burgers. As an American, we gotta get more burgers. But, yeah, construction's looking great. Um, I could be doing this wrong. But hey, if I'm doing things wrong, let me know in the comments below. I will switch it up if we need to. We definitely don't need any more fossil fuels, because right now we're looking... 169 is not too bad. I think that's pretty good, right? I think that's pretty darn good. I could be wrong. I could be, always be wrong, but... Um, oh, we're doing some more. What's that? Infrastructure? M municipal? Uh, structure? Brown versus Board of Education? Cool. cool. Oh, the sect crisis. Will the South let this pass? We'll see what happens. And a defeat for France. Ah, yes. I remember this. reading about this in history class. Yeah. Yep, pretty much. Uh... Achieved a gearing collectivization. Indian annexation of the Adaman and Nicobar Islands. Are... Oh, it's Elephant! Elephant! Where's the zoo? Unsurprising. Very cool. Return to Port Juby to Morocco. Alright. And renunciations. I really don't remember which one it was. It seems like we should do patriarchal society, but this is for the revolution, right? <sighs> Preserve traditional family values. I just don't know. I want to say they do both. Like, you know, because, you know, the one-child policy and such, but, like... Uh, you know what, we're just going to do something else, like, appoint 
Liu Lalu as chief of the Air Force. I don't remember which one. They obviously don't care about girls, but at the same time, that's not very revolution-like. But we do get industrial park construction speed. We really don't need any more population. Socialist values. That sounds like something we would do. Traditional culture. And traditional culture does not sound like something that we would do, right? Right? Um, I think we're done with this. Pretty much this page for now, which is actually really nice. Oh, state infrastructure. There we go. Um, so, uh, I think we'll probably go end the feudal family. I mean, that just seems like it makes more sense to bring about the revolution. We must end the patriarchal society that we have. By ending the feudal family, we can begin focusing on the community. Pushing our people to change how they view their families, communities, and by proxy their nation. Nothing there, nothing there. It, gender equal... I don't know which one we, we should go down. I guess we'll just end the feudal family. Which doesn't make sense, but does make sense. I don't know. We get more research speed with barely any, though. You know, I do prefer this one, but... <sighs> Gender equality, but sorry, we're going to kill off all the girls. <sighs> we lose 5%. I don't want to lose any more 5%. I mean, it'll be okay, but like... <sighs> There's so many more buffs here. The traditional family structure. The patriarchal society. And to truly transform the People's Republic of China into a true communist state, then we must remove all barriers hindering our people, including gender barriers. By enforcing gender equality, we can be begin transforming China into a nation of into the future. Into a nation of the future. Oh, it's going to go that way. God dang it. I don't know. Hey, we have burgers! We have 30... Look at that. Actually, oh, not bad. 0.42, not bad. Um, obviously, we want to keep increasing our burger amount just because, like, we probably need to. But at the same time, we want to keep increasing our factories and such like that. Oh, wait. We actually made the office park, right? Oh, what is that? Air Force... Oh, okay, so... Pakistan condemns Afghani threats, whatever. Um, I did make the first Asian games, look at that. Um, uh, Air Force, so... Prince Faisal appointed Prime Minister. Following the coronation of King Saul, Prince Faisal took over as Crown Prince to his brother, the King. Prince Faisal served administrative posts as a military leader for the father, his father, King Ibn Saud, and has extensive di diplomatic experience as a Saudi foreign minister. King Saud's ambitious projects and extravagant spending has led to financial problems and public discomfort to the government. In addition, radio broadcasts from Arab national states denouncing the old Arab monarchies have gained increasing popularity among segments of the population. Fearing the current wave of Arab nationalism and growing public anger at government spending has led a faction of the ulema and royal family to band together. They confirmed King Saud and demanded that he place King Faisal to the port to, po to the post of Prime Minister with executive powers. Reluctantly, the king has agreed and Faisal has become Prime Minister. Diplomats and Riyadh believe that this may curtail the king's more impulsive decisions, but there's little doubt the brothers will clash and it's highly possible that instead of acting as a check to the king's power, this may be instead lead to large Larger infighting within the Saudi royal family. Only time will tell whether this appointment can restore Saudi prestige. Hopefully, King Faisal will restore our stability. See, I did make a little bit more of an air force, but that's okay. That's not bad. Monthly balance is not bad. We just want to keep making more money, right? Um, I guess maybe would it be worth it? Just making more and more office parks from here on out. Like keep one line on, on office parks. I think that sounds like fun. So we got 25% there. 25%. Ooh, let's, let's, that, yeah, let's, let's try that one. More office parks. More, 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 more. Right? What do you do with our pee, pee now? And the feudal family, which it is what it is. Gender equality until we abort some stuff, but whatever. Um, we don't need the manpower, but I just don't remember which one we, we should take, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, we need early renewables. Is that titanium alloys? Can we do that one? No, we can't. Is this one early renewables? Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, it is 1955, though. Happy 1955, everyone. But we're going to keep going on with the land auction. Because we'll probably honestly need it. Like, if we can maximize land auction as fast as possible, that'd probably be pretty good to do. Yeah. That'd probably be pretty good. A titanium alloys. Nice. Let's go look over here for research. So, 55. Higher levels of supercomputers. More weapon types. Research speed. I definitely want to get more research speed for now. Well, that's 1960 stuff. Look at that. Titanium alloys. Thank you very much. Followed up with, after gender equality, what are we going to do? Guarantee primary education. We heard consumer goods. We'll get more research speed. Expand universities. Remodel the intellectuals. Do we get another research slot somewhere? The Hundred Flowers campaign. I like that one. The sign of Soviet split. We'll do that one later. Okay, so let's finally talk about it. So, I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do the occupation of the DPRK or the Treaty of Friendship. And overall, there is more support for... Occupation. We will do the occupation of the DPRK because people recommend we do that, so... And there is support for both sides, but there's just overall more support for that one. Oh, successful coup in Yemen, okay. El Al Flight 402, alright. A tragedy. So after that one, then we'll probably come down here and do... I think it's time for us to do the Great Leap Forward. I think it's finally time. Because we're getting more stability and stuff like that. Ooh, look, 8,000. 
We lose 400% monthly population. 200 weekly manpower goes down. Factory output goes way up. Industrial park construction goes way up. And we can invent the Great Leap Forward. Nothing bad happened during the Great Leap Forward. Anything you hear about it being bad is obviously fake news. Unification of Austria, finally. Oh, it took until 55, huh? Hey, Austria's exist, so look at that. Nice, nice mustache. Julius Rob. FMB.25, French Republic. Nice pipe, nice pipe. Foray? Oh, do they still have... That's Luxembourg. Okay, so... The Rhineland is not part of the Germany. You're looking kind of old, Conrad. Scientific collapse. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, occupation of the DPRK. Cool. And just one fell swoop, of course. The founder of Jush and the supposed liberator of Northern Korea, Kim Il-sung, was opposed in, in a palace coup. The officers and endorsers of the Chinese model socialism after seeing Mao's triumph against nationalists during for for nationalist forces during the Civil War. I proclaim that the new Democratic People's Republic of Korea will continue to the fight against capitalists side-by-side side with the new ally, the PRC. Chairman Mao has been delighted to hear the news and has declared that he sees a very bright future for all of the people that reside in North Korea. In a few moments, Chinese troops have been seen marching in Pyongyang and other cities of the communist counterpart of the ROK. It seems like a Mao's light shines upon the DPRK. Concerning, I guess the other one was more historical. Yeah. I'm sorry we got rid of Kim Il-sung. I'm sorry. But now they're our puppet, right? They are a puppet. We need more influence here. <clears throat> West Germany joins NATO. Unsurprising. And now, well, reshuffle the cabinet. Do we get... Oh, it looks like we might have gotten rid of their focus tree then. Yeah, it looks like we might have, yeah. Oopsie. Oh, well. Soviet alignment. What do you mean by Soviet alignment? What? You want Chinese alignment? What the heck? Western alignment. No, 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 no. That sucks. My bad. Oh, well. I did ask you guys which way we should go, so there goes the Vietnamese monarchy. An end of an era. That's so sad. According to some. So who's this group? Luau? It's you. So you just kind of hug. Hug the northern Vietnamese. I think they'll be okay with that. They love hugs. Vietnam loves hugs. Don't quote me on that. Great leap forward. Ah, nothing bad happened here. Man, you guys take forever to get higher levels, man. Take forever. But the Great Leap Forward, Mao Zedong has finally announced that China will take a course of action that derives itself from the need to move past the Agrarian society as it has been for centuries, and to start taking the shape of a modern industrial nation. It is with this intent that the chairman of the CCP has moved forward with the Great Leap Forward, using collectivization in people's communes, encouraging all peasants that reside in the People's Republic to produce backyard furnaces in order to supply or produce backyard furnaces, or to supply the state with steel, banning private holdings and using irrigation projects without the use of formally educated engineers. The leader of China's promise with all of his heart that this campaign will move China into a new direction, making it one of the greatest powers in the world, if not the greatest. Why are we at war? Or are we have border conflicts? Oh, you're not still down here. Okay, that's interesting. That is interesting. I didn't realize that. Okay, so I didn't realize they were still alive. How do we get rid of you, then? My bad. Get your butts in there. It's only mountain defending, and you actually have a lot of uh, organization, so. Pakistan purchase Gwadar. Adams for peace. I mean, you're in mountains, right? Okay, KMT insurgents repelled in Yunnan. After the fall of nationalist China, beaten back KMT army was retreating from the mainland. Stuck in Yunnan, the army of Tiaong Yao was composed of 30,000 troops and gradually lost most of the personnel to desertion. Mass surrenders or fall to pursuing communist formations. 1,500 of these troops found themselves in a remote corner of Burma's Shan state. These 1,500 men had begun a military operation to Yunnan, being defeated by the communist garrisons that defend the region, and thus being thrown back into Burma. What a poorly thought out plan. My bad, I should have been more aware of that, but whatever. Here, you guys want to do something? Here, come down here. It's gonna suck. That's alright. I'll hang out. Have a good time! The murder of Emmett Till. Ah, I remember hearing about that one. That was an unfortunate thing that happened, man. Barbaric. Absolutely terrible. Good. We're doing okay, though. Plus 13 uh, foodies? Nice. Wait. Well, because we did gender equality, we got more manpower, but now we only get. Monthly growth in states. Is that... What? Civilian is minus 567,000, but recruitable is 568,000. What? Uh, is, that, is that correct? Let's get some Soviet assistance. We could use some more stuff here. Um, okay. We still have no fuel, but... Oh, yeah. I'm going to forget about this stuff, too. Here. Train. Who's going to lead our fleet? Nobody. Ponting? Ponting. Are you okay? You seem to be ponting quite a bit. Ah, oh, that's a terrible joke. That is a god-awful joke. My apologies. Uh, World War II. Uh, heavy cruiser battleships. I think we're going to wait. I like that one, but can we actually get anything better than that right now? Um, yes, we can. So we can close out of that one, too. Goodbye. 
And now it's going up. Look at that. Oh, that's barely going. Holy crap, that's really bad. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, is there anything else we could be doing with our money? Or not money, but like PP? Pee -pee? Establishment of the Republic of Vietnam. Interesting. Nice haircut. Nice, nice hairline. Very nice. Send artillery and stuff to Vietnam. We could, but we're not going to do that. Soviet assistants and Soviet trainers. Oh, that's not bad. Wait. Am I... MIG MIG 15 Fagot. Okay. Transforming your army would be nice. People's army. People's Liberation Navy? Might as well. Our, navy, na our nation has never been a seafaring power, but that must change. With the threat we will face from imperialists, colonizers, and capitalists, we must establish a people's navy to ensure that we can deal with threats in the Pacific and beyond. Oh, we got some planes here? Nice. These guys are actually doing exercises, which is fine with us. How experienced are they? Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of penalties here. Um, Doesn't look like they're really doing too much, so... All right. Oh, oh, failed coup in Saudi Arabia. Look at that. Saudi Arabia announced today has arrested dozens of Air Force personnel who are plotting to overthrow the Saudi state. Many more arrests were expected to follow in the aftermath. The government has long suspected Nasserists had infiltrated the military and the urban middle class. The government said the plotters were about to launch a pooch that would see Riyadh taking over and air raids on key government facilities. President Nasir. Or Nasser, through Radio Cairo, has long advocated that the liberation of the Arab world will begin with the liberation of Riyadh, and the breakup of this plot will no doubt be a great blow to his regional objectives. The failure of the coup will no doubt push the Saudi government to strengthen oversight on the military and increase its paranoia. Prince Salal and the young princes, who have long been sympathetic to Nasser and transition to a constitutional government, will be under much greater scrutiny by the Saudi king. The United States will be breathing a sigh of relief that it helped prevent the fall of a critical ally in the region. A close call for the House of Saud. Anna Pauker. Okay. Well, unfortunate for her. Imposing imperialist oppression. Um, yeah, why not? We can do that one. Zhejiang will be a perfect location to begin expanding dockyards, along with increasing your naval capacity. It'll also help revitalize a war-torn region and bring about thousands of new jobs for our people. That seems like a really good thing to do. The Hardish Group Trials. Like-minded liberal Marxists have been arrested in a bunch of liberal Marxists. Well, nothing like a bunch of different leftist ideologies. Alright, cool. And we got a few days left. It gets more naval XP, which we're barely getting any, which sucks, but you know, I just give it one day. There you go. Cool. Modern Railways, thank you. And more research. Um, We're doing that one already, which is nice. It's 55. Anything else here? Yeah, we, could, we still have a lot you could do here, yeah. Mod modern water infrastructure? I like that. I would love to get more weekly war support. How much? We're getting plus 0.9 weekly stability, which is very nice. Followed up with what? I'm going to do more of this stuff. Guarantee primary education. Eh, it hurts the consumer goods a little bit. 100 flowers, reconsider the legitimacy of the regime. We definitely got to go with the rectification campaign. I think it's good to do guaranteed primary education next. Here's your consumer goods. That's barely anything, though. So, and get more research speed, too, out of it, which is good. The People's Communes. Oh, oh, and forced collectivization with People's Communes. We lose a lot of political power. A lot of political power. The trial and error economics. That sounds like that would never hurt anybody. Backyard Fern says, you know what? Actually, South Vietnam rejects the Geneva Accords, as they should. Early hard disks. We like them hard. Um, yeah, why not? Actually, I'm going to go with the one that gives us more industrial parks. Trial and error. Just a simple trial and error here in the P, uh, PRC. Just, you know, things work. Wow, we get five 100% research bonuses for industry. That's uh, quite a bit. The Montgomery bus boycott. All right. Things are heating up in America. Will things ever change? Maybe. We'll see what happens. God, I want to... Ooh, space. I thought this was nukes. Space race has not started yet. All right. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, 20 mil so much. The first five-year plan hurts us, but the egalitarian beliefs are also very nice. Uh, do we want patriarchy? Women's rights. Yeah. City atheism, secularism. Hmm. Pakistan rejects the no-war pact. Okay. Tensions in Trieste. All right. Well, have fun with that. Traditional. Social. Financial. Yeah, I don't know. This is this stuff is all very expensive. We can only get thirty nine billion every month or whatever. So definitely got to keep an eye on the budget. Don't want the budget to go kaboom. Hey, that's not bad though. We're still going up. We're still going up. Getting more office marks is probably going to be a key to our growth. We got a lot of civvies though. Year over year, thirty percent. I mean, that's it's pretty nice, is it not? Anything for food? Anything for money? Anything else? If we did. Uh, let's see. That's not bad. Agricultural tax income is not much. Trial and error economics, nothing like trial and error. Backyard furnaces. Production efficiency goes down by 5%, but less resources to market. We're kind of okay, except hey, even burgers. Look at that. That's not too bad. The independence of Sudan. The 7th Olympic Winter Games. 
Cool, so it is 50... Happy 56, everyone. Imanat... Imamat of Oman. Republic of Sudan. Sudan. Did he... Did, I, I assume that Dwight Eisenhower was the two-term president, wasn't he? I don't remember. Yeah, because him and then JFK, right? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Sure. Uh, let's take a look at this. Oh, they didn't have a faction? I thought they were part of NATO. Wait, what? Is NATO not a faction? Foreign power projection. Alright, well. Yeah, there's zero percent. That's just nice. Financial reserves is pretty good. Total debt, none. Military expenditure, GDP, 0. 0.47 is really nice. We have a lot of infamy, though. Look at that. That sucks. The Virgin Land Campaign. The Soviet Union agricultural sector has long been an era of concern for the government. Under Stalin, forced collectivization sought to keep peasants to the land, but this harsh policy often led to disappointing yields, heavy losses of life, and peasant discontent. The regime of Nikita Khrushchev has decided an ambitious project called the Virgin Lands Campaign to greatly expand Soviet agricultural productivity by cultivating millions of hect hect acres of previously uncultivated lands. These proposed lands are located in lands east of the Volga to the western Siberia. In addition, Khrushchev will expand on agricultural reform policies to encourage productivity and improve the conditions of farmers. The ambition plan has detracted concerns over cost and feasibility, but Khrushchev will not be deterred from his goal to lead an agricultural revolution. The government has launched an aggressive propaganda campaign targeting young Soviet citizens to move his settlers to these lands out of patriotic duty. So far, the response has been very positive. A bold new plan. Now we're going to lose so much PP. I'm going to assume we're going to get like, actually, we get a lot of PP right now. That's a lot. Holy crap. But like, I'm going to assume we're going to get like, I don't know, 1% maybe? One, or just one? Increase work hours? Less consumer goods, less stability, which is totally fine. We get more consumer goods or construction speed. And production efficiency cap goes up. What's not to love? What's not to love here? Keep working on stuff, guys. 0.47. I want at least 1 trillion in GDP eventually. At least 1 trillion. All right, shock and all. We love shock and all. We have so much army XP right now. And unification of Trias, all right. The flight of Mohammed V. And, hey, guns looking great. Actually, that's looking really good. We need so much more light artillery, though. If that's the case, let's come down to... Well, 15 is kind of a bit much for us. Let's go down to 5. Because we can share the wealth, right? Share that fat wealth. You do that and go there. All right, nice. So that stuff is all done. This stuff is all done, too. So, let's come back to industry and do a lot more of this stuff here. Yes, monthly population. Why not? Because we could probably use that. And, so we got 2.76 is going to drop pretty hard soon. And we don't like dropping things too much. Not too much. Well, let's go to the next one. Increase work hours. Yes, please. And now it's... Oh! Minus 40% and minus 0 0.4 or 0 0.5. That's not bad. It's 2.29. I can get along with that one. Why not? Cool, we'll have another workspace here too. Get more industry, get more farmlands. Actually, do we need this many farmlands? Well, let's get this one done and we'll put it to the bottom. We'll get make some more stuff here too. What's this? Renewables. This expensive power plant consumes no resources to produce. Petrochemicals. Uh, we probably could honestly use that. Yeah, we could probably really use that. Rare hydro earth and stuff like that. That's not bad. Modern water infrastructure. Good. We're doing that already. Green energy. Might as well. I want to get all the industrial stuff done as fast as possible. Um, here you go. Well, Vyavia now. Just for the future. You never know. Hmm. What is this? Industrialized, pre-industrialized cities. PRC creates simplified Chinese. Oh, that's good. If you want to build this, please go right ahead. Average 40 million people in top. Spend money to upgrade industrial estates to develop and improve income and building slots. Not being upgraded. 25 billion to industrialize pre-industrial states. Uh, sure, why not? Let's try that. Increase worker hours. Crop experimentation. Oh, that sounds like good. First year success. Oh, oh, there's a research slot. That's right. I want to get that research slot. That'd be really good for us. That'd be very, very good for us. Pay off the debt. Not bad. But we don't really need that, so... 0.43. Yeah, come on. Can we get more GDP, please? Oh, yeah. We're about to hopefully get some more, you know, money. 31.7 billion is going to jump up to what? Nothing else. <laughs> ah, it's all good. It's all good. General Strike in Bahrain. A French Sultan. The flight of the free princess, or princes. I prefer princesses, but whatever. King Ibn Saud, the founder of the uh, Saudi Arabia, united with Arabia with a sword and a close ideological alliance with the Wahhabi ulema. Since then, the kingdom has been run by the royal family, working in conjunction with the ulema to ensure all laws obey gods. In recent years, however, the popularity of Pan-Arabianism, or Arabism, espoused by President Gamal Nasser of Egypt, has spread across the Arab world. The royal family is not immune to this influence. A number of ideological young princes have united under the leadership of Prince Talal and call themselves the free princes, in homage to Nasser's 
free offices. These young princes have rallied around Prince Fa Talal, who often brings up the need for more democratic reforms and a constitution to senior members of the family. However, the king and senior ulema no longer have patience with the free princes. They are called subversive, secret communists, and some quarters are viewed as anti-Islam in their push for reforms that challenge the Islamic char character of the state. Some have had their assets frozen, and most of the free princes have fled the country and fear persecution from the government. Many have arrived in Lebanon and Egypt. The Egyptians are expected to start using prominent princes, especially Prince Talal, to broadcast messages against the Saudi state. Although these free princes will raise mischief abroad, at least they will not be or foment unrest within not just the kingdom, but the royal family itself. Will change ever come to Saudi Arabia? Well, the more things stay the same, the more things change. The more things change, the more things stay the same. It is what it is. I don't know. That's what I've heard. Man, that sucks. We're barely getting anything. Um, with this municipal... I mean, that's good and all. I want to... Um, what are we at currently at? We're at Industrial Park. So we have one... Two-ish. That's not bad. I would like to increase it to three. So after we're done with this one, I think I'm going to drop it a little bit more. Crop experimentations. First year success. Yes. You know, so we'll do it. We'll do it right now. We don't need that many farms for now. So let's go ahead and do this as well. I want more. More, more, more. When in doubt, get more. Yes. The Tehran Trials and Andrew Nera. Uh-oh. Well, okay. We got... Seriously, like, if you guys play this mod, or the devs are watching still, um, what do we do with PP? Like, what else can we do? Like, I, I really want to use a political power. Like, it seems, it would just make a lot of sense for Maudi's a lot of political power, right? Look at that. Nice. 0.48, almost half a trillion. Nice. Keep building stuff. I don't mind doing this one. At least getting, ooh, well, yeah, and that's technically, yeah, let's do that one first. Yeah, it makes more sense to get more uh, stuff like that first. Yeah, that makes more sense. Cool. And we should be almost done with this. Almost done. Yes. Uh, first year success. And that makes us, we're done with this side. Um, Sino Soviet split, we'll do that one later on. Let's do guaranteed primary education. I think that would be worth it. It's already May in 1956. I love that we're blitzing through this right now in this episode, so. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Well, I don't mind maybe getting an intelligence agency too, though. That might be really fun. 15! Intelligence Department Central Committee Omission? Commission. Commission. <sighs> Nothing. Wow, 90 days. Battlecruiser Mark II. Polls? Nice. Um... Aircraft carriers would be nice. Do we have any guns on them we can throw on? Naval doctrines, slice ships. Um, ship modules. Oh, heavy arm. Oh, my goodness. Rocket armaments and rocketry tree. AA and fire support and rocketry. I'm not going to remember that. Hedge hedgehogs. Oh, that's nice. Um, let's get some heavy armaments, I guess. Oh, oh, we got another one, too. Oh, yes. Arty. Oh, yeah, we can get better Arty, right? Yeah, we definitely do. SPAA gun 2. Anti-aircraft gun. We can grab it because we can. I, mean, I want to research as much as we possibly can. With an extra research slot, that'll definitely help us out, but still. So, we'll see what happens. Whoa, 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 whoa. General Secretary Anand Yugov. The shift to desalinization launched from Moscow has led the major communist parties across Europe to reassess their policies and structures. In Bulgaria, the old guard, which has controlled the party since the first or since World War II, by following a pro-Soviet Stalinist line, found itself sidelined within the party. With desalinization being the order of the day, the Bulgarian Communist Party announced it was appointing Anton Yugov as first secretary. Yugov condemns the cult of personality and supports the development of Bulgarian communism. Independent Moscow in the past. Such views could have led to there was a removal from power and party, but with desalinization embraced by the party. These views will form the basis of the party. The old guard now faces criticism, and the supporters will not view, view the appointment of Yugov as a productive step for the party. Yugov has also bested rivals within his camp who may have sought to take the senior leadership position for themselves. Surprising. Followed up with expanding universities, so extensive educational investment with even expanded universities. So get some more research speed, which, honestly, at this point, we're just trying to modernize, like become a, an actual modern power, so we're so close to half a trillion. So close. So close. Oh, do we? Oh, so we have one, two, so we have three civvies. Oh, that really hurt our consumer goods. That's not good. Look at that. Greatly bored. I like that. More industrial parks, please. Yes. Expand the universities. Oh, like I said before, I love these short focuses. They just, it keeps me more motivated, like, and just interested in what's going on here. Because you know, like, within a few days, a few weeks, you got the next thing coming up, which I love, 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 love. love. Grab that one. More income. Oh, yes, please. More money. 90 days, that's so long. Slot has been locked, 8 days left for this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did for that one. So after fine material stuff, let's grab some more palletization, more longshore income, production efficiency base, more fuel capacity, more ship repair speed. I think that's worth it. Like, I'm really focused on the industry. Probably I should fo be focused a little bit more on the military stuff, but we probably will be going to Warsaw. Oh, Uprising in Poland. Another rebellion. Oh, Olympic Games, cool. Another rebellion in Warsaw Pact? Always, especially when, when we... Did they already have the one in Hungary? They might have already had it. Hmm. We don't talk about that. Especially the one that happens in Tiananmen Square in 89. That's, that's a few decades off. 
the people that died that totally didn't die there haven't been born yet, but if they were there, they totally would have been, would have been removed. Revise curricula for 90 days. We lose some stability, which is fine. Get more mal support. More research speed. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. 100 flowers. Let 100 flowers bloom. Chairman Mao is prepared to take action in the greatest campaign ever launched in the People's Republic of China. It won't be an easy task, but as many in the party are still doubtful, but surely we will succeed. Encourage open criticism of the campaign of the regime. Ooh. I don't know. I want to do this one next time. Uh, we already have the DPRK there, so... Presidential visit to Pakistan. Okay, that's cool. Leave Tibet alone. Appeasement in the Himalayas. Why the heck would we do that? Crush your insurgency. Oh, oh we, already, we already killed them off. Okay. Demand extradition of the Dalai Lama. But let's get some flowers. I like your flower, dude. That sounds very weird to say. A new direction for Poland? Why not? And we've got a few days left. Oh, the canal's been seized. Uh-oh. Well, okay, well, I guess probably that's good for the nationals in this country, but... It's probably not good for everyone else. Oh, what else do we have here? Send guns and tanks. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Cool. But like normal, guys, if there's anything I can do to improve this campaign, please let me know in the comments below. But I think I'm going to end here, and I'll let you know that we're going to do encourage open criticism of the regime. Surely this measure will yield a lot of power for us. But would it be safer for the party to keep it, or should our strategy be changed? And I think I'm probably going to go ahead and take a little pause from doing all these, and probably do reuse old Japanese aircraft, Soviet MIGs 15s, Soviet trainers, as well as Shenyang Aircraft Corporation. But... If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, as we'll hopefully push out of the 50s and maybe, maybe get to 1960 and see what else will happen in China, especially with a great leap forward. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.